What's up guys, it's Trent, and today I'm gonna to talk about how to make seamless patterns in Affinity Designer. Now, this is something I've been wanting to do more of recently, but I was always kind of avoiding it in the past because I never liked the methods I saw online. They always required kind of adding widths and heights to things and making sure your canvas is the exact right size. And I want a little more freedom when I'm designing. So the method I'm gonna show you today is super simple. There's no numbers, no math, works with any canvas size. And I think it's gonna make your life a lot easier and help you be a little even more creative. So let's get into it here. So I have Affinity Designer open here and I think my document size is eight and a half by 11, but it doesn't matter at all. You can have any rectangle you want. It can be a perfect square. It's all gonna work. So first I'll bring in some graphics just to uh, give us an, something to work with here. These are from Creative Fabrica, which is a great site if you wanna get assets for creating your designs. I'll put a link in the description. And we have a chipmunk here, some kind of bushes. I'll just resize them to fit on the screen. So now the key thing about this technique, I'm gonna have the chipmunk just be kind of a, an element in the middle of the design. What I want is why I wanna have this bush repeat from one side to the other. And what you wanna do here is you wanna turn on the snapping at the top menu here. And what's gonna happen is you wanna drag your bush or whatever object you have to the very outside edge of this to, of the canvas here. And then if you hold Alt and you copy it, drag it to the other side and make sure it snaps to the inside of the canvas here, all right? And then you can make sure they're both aligned, see, vertically in the middle. And now if you snap them both to the edge like that and align them vertically, you can move them back and forth. And this is actually gonna be a seamless pattern because they're offset by the canvas distance. So you don't wanna actually just take my word that it's gonna work. You always wanna test these designs. So let's export this graphic. I'm going to choose export here. And I'll just put it in my folder here. Let's call it pattern, pattern one. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new canvas. And this is, again, is just for test purposes. And what you can do is you can create a rectangle. And if you select the fill tool and then select the a bitmap so that it'll fill with a bitmap. Choose your pattern that you just exported. And then if you kind of quickly click, click and drag, you can see that it will repeat. So let's actually zoom in and make sure the, the it's a seamless pattern. So yes, you can see the bush is actually, there's no break in it. It's actually perfectly repeating there. Um, to go back to our original canvas, you can see it's kind of split on this third leaf. So let's look at the third leaf closely. Yeah, I don't see any place where it's uh, distorted or, or sheared or anything. So it looks like it worked. So now we can add some more elements and make our design a little more complex. Um, I'll import another object. Let's see, how about, uh, let's, we'll do this bird. And then we'll just put him there and maybe we'll want the chipmunk to be down here. But then we want not another element that goes off the screen. So let's do that with a, some type of plant. Now here what I'm gonna do is I want to go off the top and bottom of the image. So it's very similar to the technique I showed before. You wanna turn snapping back on and you just wanna make sure you're aligned with the top outside edge and then copy your object and then align with that inside edge. You can see there's like the red, the red line that comes up when you're aligned. So you select them both, make sure they're both aligned horizontally this time. And now you can move it in different areas. And something you can do is you can turn off snapping when you're moving it, if you don't like it going in those areas. So I can actually, you can send it to the back too. Uh, that's the back. Um, maybe we wanna, again, rearrange these guys a little bit, bring him to the front. So this is, that's our uh, chipmunk there, it's our bird. And let's test this and make sure this actually works. So I'm gonna export it again. And I'll go back to my test document you have to re-import the bitmap. It doesn't automatically refresh. And let's see. So now we have, again, this new design. And if we look closely, it is seamless. Our graphic, which was kind of divided around the halfway point somewhere, uh, looks perfect. I don't see any cuts or anything. So one other thing I want to let you know about is how to handle corners. And corners aren't that big of a problem. You just have to do the top and sides at the same time. So I'll let's place another element in there. Uh, we'll do, let's see, um, this, let's 
a monstera leaf. And I'll resize it. So I'll turn the stamping back on. Here I'm doing it to the top outside edge on the right. And then you want to go and also do the opposite side here. But you want to do the bottom parts also. So here, you want to look closely and here. Now sometimes you want to make sure it's not snapping to something else that you're not planning. So I'll select my monstera leaves and let's do this. Turn off snapping. And that's how you handle the corners. You just want to make sure you get those four parts at once. So let's export it and test it. We'll bring our new bitmap. And it looks good. The leaf looks fine. Let's see where it's splitting. It's kind of splitting three quarters of the way up. Somewhere around here is where it would be splitting. I don't see any issue with it. So it's starting to work. You can see that we have this complex repeating pattern going on. Now, like I said earlier, what's nice about this technique is you can continue to experiment with your designs. You can select these objects and you can move them around and see what is a better composition. You just want to make sure that you move things around always with its twin object or it's just the other four, three objects in the case of the corners. One thing you can do is you can group objects so that they're always together. So I'll group those side ones, I'll group these and you can group the corner ones. That makes it less likely that you'll make a mistake and you'll you'll click the wrong thing. So I can move these around. If I click this, it will always be good. Move this guy. These are grouped now. And you don't have to test every single change as you're doing it, but I like to periodically you want to test to make sure you don't get too far off track of, you know, maybe you made a mistake a while ago and it might be a little bit tricky to fix, but just make sure you test occasionally. Now, one thing you want to be careful about is resizing and rotating objects. It's possible to do, but there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. So first, let's look at the wrong way to do it. So I'm going to take this top and bottom leave as an example. And let's say I just uh, resize it like this, because I'm like, oh, that works. And I, you know, I kind of place it. And let's see what happens. So I'll export it. I'll bring it back in to my test document. And you can see there's a problem there. And the problem is that we didn't scale the objects with respect to their own origins. So let's go back to our document and see how to do it the right way. So I'm just gonna delete this one and I'm gonna re-center it. I'm gonna remake the pattern. Okay, so let's say I get it going somewhere and you know this is a correct pattern. Now I decide that I wanna resize them. Well, what you have to do is you have to click this button up here that says transform objects separately. So what this is gonna do is gonna scale each object with respect to its own center, its origin, and that will actually make things work correctly. So I did this and I can move this thing around where I want and I'll export it again and see how it went. And now we can see actually that leaf is actually done the correct way now. So that's the whole technique. It's really quite simple. I've been using it for some of my own designs. It's fast, it's easy, doesn't require a lot of, uh, doesn't require any math, and it lets you experiment uh, more, which is something that I find the most valuable. If you have a question, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll check and try to get back to you. I may make a video in the future for Canva and other platforms, so if you wanna know how to do this somewhere else, leave a comment and that will let me know that I should focus on that. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.